to defend the rights of female prisoners. This is not something I ever imagined I would have to do. In my 38 years in Parliament, I've always supported the rights of women, but I was never a champion because there were a large number of parliamentarians far better qualified than me and because I thought that women's rights were generally headed in the right direction. Not as quickly as they should be, but in the right direction nevertheless. Now I find that the rights of women are under the greatest threat I have seen in my whole lifetime. Not just the rights to safe places in bathrooms and changing rooms, NHS, uh, single sex wards, but, and in prison, but their whole existence as biological women is under existential threat. As some people, nearly all men, seek to erase the word women from the lexicon or commandeer it for the use of men who identify as women. Now let me be crystal clear, my lords, I completely support the right of men as guaranteed in the Equality Act to change their gender and to identify as women. They must not be discriminated against. But let us be equally clear that men who identify as the female gender are not biological women. Because, my lords, it has been said before, only women have a cervix, only women have a womb and bear children, and it is not transphobic to point out that elementary biological fact which has been at the root of human existence for countless millennia. I believe the threat against women is increasing daily. Young lesbian women are being condemned as transphobic if they refuse to have, refuse to have sex with men who claim to be women. What a perversion of common sense and reality that is. But it's worse than that. The police say there's been a doubling of crime by female paedophiles. No, my lords, that is a big fat exaggeration. Sexual abuse by women has increased, but it is still infinitesimally small in comparison to men. Lynn Owens of the National Crime Agency says that the problem of male paedophilia may be seven times higher than at first thought. There has been a huge increase by male paedophiles, some of whom then describe themselves as women, and of course our thoroughly woke police force swallow that nonsense and record it as if the rape and sodomy of children was being done by real women. Our police force, some of them, are trashing the reputation of women by accusing them of crimes being committed by men. So I believe that the message should go out to the police service that when a male is arrested or commits a crime, he should be recorded as male and never as female, no matter uh, how he designates himself. And then, my lawyers, we come to prisons on the substance of my amendment. And I'm afraid the situation there is just as bad. Now, I'm not, well, I'm in a minority, I suspect, in this House, on, on many things I am. I'm not one of those who believes that women should not be sent to prison. When the crime justifies it, then women should go to prison and be punished. But, my lords, that punishment should not include the threat of rape and violence from big brute rapers who have decided to identify as women and get sent to a women's a unit. The female prison estate is currently run as a mixed-sex institution. This is because the MOJ policies permit prisoners of the male sex where they identify as transgender and where they fulfil certain criteria to be allocated to the female estate and held in women's prisons alongside vulnerable female offenders. Eligible males include those convicted of the most serious violent and sexual offences and those with intact male genitalia. Amongst others in prison at the moment, there is a vile man, and I actually describe him as a vile man, who raped two children, got his gender recognition certificate whilst in prison, and is now swaggering around the female prison wing. I cannot name him, nor his prison. I believe that women's prisons should be separate sex and single sex facilities for reasons of the safety, the dignity and privacy of women in prison. Now, since the Corston Report in 2007, it's been acknowledged throughout the criminal justice system that women in prison exhibit patterns of vulnerability that distinguish them both from women in the wider community and from male offenders. Female offenders report disproportionately high rates of previous experience of violent and sexual abuse and experience high rates of mental health problems. Indeed, in the last debate, I heard the noble Lord Lord Dubbs say that three quarters of women in prison had suffered from male violence themselves before being sent to prison. And in fact, a recent study in Scotland, of prisons in Scotland, found a high prevalence of significant head injury of almost 80%. These injuries were most often caused by repeated incidents of domestic abuse occurring over several years. Now, for many female prisoners, 
Time in prison is, not the first opportunity to, is often the first opportunity to tackle the complex issues around their offending, improve their health and access the services they need. Where women in prison have been the victims of sexual and violent assault, prison is often the first time they can be confident that they will be away from their male abusers. And where women in prison have been the victims of sexual and violent abuse at the hands of men, the presence of any offender of the male sex may have an inherently traumatising effect, regardless of the nature of offence committed. It is for good reason that approaches to tackling female offending have consistently emphasised the need for trauma-responsive services. Now, the Ministry of Justice policy uh, that permits prisoners of the male sex to be housed in the female estate is called the care and management of individuals who are transgender. The policy states that all male prisoners who identify as transgender and who are in position of a gender recognition certificate must be allocated to the female estate. The conviction, offending history, risk profile, anatomy are of no consideration. Theoretically, a decision may be made to transfer to the male estate after risk assessment. We know of no situation where this has happened, my lords. Even the most high-risk male prisoners have remained in the female estate, including those convicted of violent and sexual offences against women and those with intact male uh, genitalia. My lords, in respect of male prisoners who identify as transgender and who have no gender recognition certificate, initial allocation is to the male estate. The prisoner may then make an application to be transferred to a woman's prison. Now, in March 2021, uh, a judicial review was brought against the Secretary of State for Justice challenging the lawfulness of the MOJ's policies that permit prisoners of the male sex to be housed in the female estate. Judgment was handed down in July and found that these policies are not unlawful. Well, I do think, my lawyers, it would be quite extraordinary if the MOJ was found to be operating an illegal policy. However, the judgment was clear that the court had been called upon to rule as to the lawfulness of the policy, not its desirability. Lord Justice Holroyd acknowledged the negative impact of these policies on women in prison. He said, quote, I readily accept that a substantial proportion of women prisoners have been the victims of sexual assaults and or domestic violence. I also readily accept the proposition that some, and perhaps many, women prisoners may suffer fear and acute anxiety if required to share prison accommodation and facilities with a transgender woman who has male genitalia, and that their fear and anxiety may be increased if that transgender woman has been convicted of sexual or violent offences against women. He also went on to say, I fully understand the concerns advanced on behalf of a claimant. Many people may think it incongruous and inappropriate that a prisoner of masculine physique and with male genitalia should be accommodated in a female prison in any circumstances, unquote, said Lord Justice Holroyd. Well, I agree uh, with the noble and learned Lord. I agree that it is both incongruous and thoroughly inappropriate. It is lawful to house prisoners of the male sex who have been convicted if it is lawful to house prisoners of the male sex who have been convicted of the most serious violent and sexual offences alongside women who have been the victims of violent and sexual assault, if that is the law, then, my lords, that law must change because it is wrong. Now, under the Gender Recognition Act of 2004, people who fulfil certain criteria are able to obtain legal recognition of the required gender. Legal recognition will follow from the issue of a gender recognition certificate uh, by a gender recognition panel. And a new birth certificate is also issued uh, with the sex marker changed to reflect the required gender and the name changed to the newly adopted name. There is no requirement for surgery or medical treatment in order to obtain a GRC. GRCs have been obtained in prison by males convicted of violent and sexual offences who have then transferred to the female prison estate. Now, I do not consider that the original intention of the Gender Recognition Act was to enable violent or sexual offenders of the male sex to be housed with women in prison, much less those who have retained fully functioning male genitalia. I would also make this point. These male prisoners want to identify as women. That's perfectly okay. But apparently, they do not want their male bodies, but every single one of them have retained their male genitalia as a swagger around female prison units. 
I suggest that those men, particularly those in prison, my lords, are simply faking being a woman to get access to real biological women in the female estate. Clauses in the, G in the Gender Recognition Act clearly indicate that a general GRC entitles a bearer to be treated as a member of the sex with which they identify for most purposes, but not all. Hence, possession of a GRC expressly does not affect recording of parenthood, the possibility of being convicted of a crime defined as one that only a man can commit is unaffected by possession of a GRC, as is the possibility of being a victim of a crime defined as one which only a female can be the victim. Uh, primogenitor is also unaffected. I submit, my lords, that incarceration for violent and sexual offences is a situation where a GRC should not take precedence over unchanged biological sex. The MOJ may be acting lawfully, but it is not acting decently, nor doing its duty to protect biological sex women. Indeed, the Ministry of Justice policy documents do not talk about women. They call them non-transgender women, automatically giving top billing to men identifying as women and real women described as non-transgender women. That is why I say that women are being erased from the lexicon. A male, no matter how he identifies, should never be housed in a woman's prison. Like many government departments and organisations, I believe we have fallen for the minority, militant, transsexual agendas, giving far more rights to men who claim to be women than to women themselves. My amendment is a small, first, little step to defend women, and I say to my noble friends that there will be many, many, many more uh, amendments to come as people realise that the assault on women is now a clear and present danger. My Lords, I commend my amendment.